Hey everyone, hope you're well. Uh, welcome to uh, another episode. Uh, I do appreciate everyone who has been listening and watching, uh, providing comments and contributing. Uh, I massively appreciate it. Um, if you're able to subscribe to wherever you're getting this from, whether it's YouTube or podcast dis distribution services, it would mean so, so much if you would uh, continue to subscribe, participate, air your comments and opinions. Um, yeah, I can't thank you enough for um, all the positive vibes that everyone's shown so far. Um, the subject for this particular episode um, is it's sort of linked to what I've been doing professionally for a number of years. So um, background for me covers a wide range of technical and sort of trades um, ranging from IT and servers and networking and cloud to um, electronic and physical security, cyber security, multi-trades, M&E, construction, wide range of vertical markets and industries. What we've seen recently, for a little while actually, um, has been a major threat from China. When I say threat, I mean there's been a lot of conjecture a lot of discussion and dispute, name calling and threats and all the rest of it. We've had allegations of spying and espionage and tracking. Um, there's been bans on firms like Who Are We? Um, allegations of kidnapping and um, holding potential spies hostage. And it comes down to things like invasion of privacy, what sort of data is being collected about us. Um, in, and, and whether or not the advances in technology are worthwhile or are they an invasion of privacy? You know, we're talking about things like biometrics, we're talking about things like iris recognition, facial recognition, artificial intelligence and neural networks. You know, a lot of the technology that you see in Hollywood films like Minority Report are slowly making their way into everyday systems. If you've got a modern laptop which has got some form of webcam, Windows 10, Windows 11, you can now uh, unlock that just through your face or through an iPhone or an Android with facial and biometric or uh, vocal recognition. They're also learning your habits, the apps you use, how much time you spend on them, where do you click on the screen, what grabs your attention. These are all facets that are being recorded about you, metadata about you that's being recorded and logged. Um, and that's before we get onto things like global financial systems and all that kind of thing. Um, what's kind of interesting is we've seen a lot of, um, especially under President Trump when he had his administration, there was a lot of anti-China sentiment and a lot of uh, motions were passed to not use Chinese technology in national infrastructure or government high value or sensitive projects, whether that be CCTV or IP surveillance, or whether it be um, in smartphone or uh, communication networks. And that started to filter its way through to the UK. There was a ban on Huawei for 5G network deployment. And this has now continued in vain. In the last couple of days, motions have been passed banning Chinese surveillance technologies and vendors from uh, certain projects or clients um, or opportunities here. So some of the major vendors include Hikvision, Darwa, uh, ZTK, um, there are others as well, many many OEMs which take the same kind of concepts and core components which include Huawei and High Silicon and sort of badge them under you know, different guises, um, and they're now being banned from things like government or critical infrastructure or national infrastructure, and it will make its way down to other uh, markets and opportunities as well. This is a major ruling because what it's doing is it's setting a precedent in terms of what is and what is not considered acceptable, what a threshold might be. Um, it takes away some of the eroding of the markets because Chinese, Chinese product in any area tends to be lower in price, very aggressively priced, very aggressively marketed. And it takes away some of the value and some of the, the, the revenue opportunities in certain markets because a certain product or service which might be of this level of expectancy, 
I might have had this level of price is now offered at this level of price and unless you come down and play at this level you just can't compete so it might help return some value to the market what it also does is it potentially through those actions there's a certain acceptance and admission there that some of those rumors may actually be true that there might have been merit to those claims because those particular vendors are the ones that are supposedly funded or have cooperation with the Chinese government or agencies or individuals by association that have ties to the Chinese government and all that kind of hearsay that made its way through various outlets for a number of years may have merit in that because now they're starting at the top in terms of the most important the most sensitive and the most high secure in nature applications but slowly working their way down that's where these vendors have been banned from now it's not just the uk and the us that have made this move there's a global coming together for cooperative work which started in CCTV and is slowly making its way out into things like access control and other elements of the security market and that's called ONVIF uh, O-N-V-I-F which is an open collaborative framework to allow different vendors different manufacturers who have got a product here or here or here to be able to talk to have some kind of basic or actually quite a high level of communication and integration with one another in the old days, if you had a particular product from Sony or Panasonic or Bosch or whoever it might be, you needed very specific understanding, clever guys who could write lines of code so that this product could talk to this product or this product, and you couldn't make a solution unless you had all of these little bits in addition to having all the products. Um, they just simply wouldn't talk. It's a little bit, little bit like the old days where you could have a Windows computer which couldn't talk to Linux, couldn't talk to Apple Mac, it couldn't talk to other systems, they're all closed. And what this ONVIF standard, which has been around for many years now through many iterations and many versions, has allowed, is an open element where the Bosch, the Sony, the Panasonic, they don't have to give away their uniqueness or their intellectual property, but there's a level of understanding and open communication allowing this product to that product to that product to talk. That allows us to have things like best of breed solutions. It allows freedom of choice. It allows you to create the, a system or solution to best meet a customer requirements by saying, if this particular manufacturer has got a USP that others don't, you can use that. And the same over here and the same over here and the same over here. So it creates the best, most open, most collaborative um, opportunity and freedom ultimately for the client. Now, because of actions of the likes of Darwa and Hikvision and others, they've been kicked out of that collaborative framework. So any ONVIF progression past a certain point in time, those Chinese vendors are not privy to that. They don't support that and it can't work. And that was already a sign that their actions and what they stand for and what they do should have been a source of concern for anyone. Obviously, Donald Trump, as I said, passed a number of bills banning them from access to certain opportunities, which looks like it's widening now in scope. The UK is following suit. That will also have repercussions because a number of other markets around the world, Asia Pac, the GCC, which is the Gulf region, Middle East, North Africa, they look to the UK and the US for things like the UL or um, uh, the British, the BSEN set of standards as their benchmark for what is and what is not permissible and usable um, in their markets. So when vendors are banned over there in the West, it will filter its way down into other markets as well. It's, pretty, it's a pretty groundbreaking and earth shattering move really, because they are the two big vendors that have dominated the worldwide market for some time now, based primarily on their aggressive tactic, tactics and pricing. Now, Will this move have an effect in some of the lower end applications? Well, unless they're banned unilaterally, probably not because of their aggressive price point. You will have to offer them if you want to win projects which are that price sensitive. But by not being allowed in certain applications or for certain clients or in markets or countries or whatever, you can't use them anymore. That immediately will raise the base price 
So that, that floor, that, that absolute bottom level of what was acceptable in terms of how low can you go on price is now going to be raised. And that's good news for everyone. It's good news for the installers and the integrators who have to do the work. It's good news for the manufacturers who have been playing by the rules and developing technology and solutions um, in the legal, shall we say, and fair manner. And it's good for the clients because they will have that freedom of choice, that quality, that reliability, that level of service that perhaps is lacking when you just go for the cheapest option. And fundamentally, for people like you and I, if that admission that, you know, there's rumours and that hearsay had elements of truth in them is correct, then we are more secure. The data and the personal information that potentially was at risk will no longer be at risk because the companies and the agencies and the people that potentially were going to grab that without our consent won't be able to do so anymore. Um, this could have also knock-on effects in the domestic market because the Ring system, which Amazon has acquired, which started off with the Ring doorbell and has now gone into security systems, there's been allegations there about how they capture data and use it and store it against your uh, consent. So anyone who's got a Ring system needs to be extremely aware and I would strongly advise you consider ditching it. Um, the knock-on effects could be in the domestic market as well. I'm a huge advocate of integration and technology, um, the whole IoT thing. And if you want to have technology in your house or your apartment, all power to you. But you should look to go for the most reputable solutions available, the most reputable brands available. And sometimes those who badge things which potentially are too good to be true, like a ring, even Google Nest, the very similarly to how Apple and Google were grabbing data and storing data from Fitbit and all the other elements as well. And of course we know with Facebook, um, you need to be extremely careful with what is being captured, how it's being captured without your consent, which is where the rings and the nests and the Fitbits and the Cambridge Analytica and all these kind of scandals came from. So I would advise you all to be very vigilant I would advise you to swerve those kind of domestic systems if at all possible. And it was worth bringing this to people's attention because what it does show is those rumours and news articles that were talking about the capturing and storing of data and the processing of biometric data without our consent was a real viable threat to our personal security and privacy. And this move should be welcomed by all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it sort of helps to uh, provoke some kind of in inquisitive nature from you all to find out more about it. Uh, as I say, I've got extensive experience um, and expertise in this field. If you've got any questions or want any clarification or anything like that, feel free to drop any comments. Contact me directly from wherever you get um, the episodes from. And please, 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 please continue to subscribe and to consume the episodes that are going out there. I do appreciate it. I'll catch you all very, very soon.